today is form day. We've got a lot of prep work left to get done before we can start setting forms, but we're very close. Um, we've got all of our lumber on site, stakes and everything. Last night we compacted all of our footing beds and sitting after doing all that work, it dawned on me that our water main down here is actually gonna have to come underneath the footing and up underneath the slab. So I've had to excavate this again. So just one of those little things that I probably could have done in a little bit different order, made a little less work for myself. We overnighted the fitting that goes from our water main, which is two inch poly. It's going to neck down to inch, inch and a quarter poly. I've got to pick up that poly this morning and I've got to pick up that fitting it should be in probably in the early afternoon. Once that's all attached, we can get this backfilled and compacted. And at that point, I think we're pretty much ready to start setting our footing forms. We just got the final foundation plan from our engineer yesterday. They had to do a little bit more work because um, they wanted to make sure that the rear wall was sufficiently engineered. That's the long and short of it. Anyway, we've got the final plan. So we've done a final count on our rebar and we're ready to pick up all of our rebar. Um, the reason I'm really happy they took a while to finish the foundation plan is there's only a few bends in the rebar that we're gonna use and it's in the corners of the footings. Otherwise, every other piece of rebar is straight, which is fantastic. So uh, if you've ever tried to bend rebar, it's not easy. Um, some of the rebar is pretty large, number five or five eighths. That's gonna save Alyssa and I and our crew team a lot of labor. Last night during the compaction, we managed to kill the strings that we had laid out for our piers. So we have to relay that out. We actually need to lay it out again anyway, because in the final drawings, those piers went from a four foot pier to a five foot pier. Thankfully the depth stayed the same. So we need to restring those lines and probably double check all of our measurements here before we get rolling. Just one of those things like triple, triple check your measurements and your plan, make sure everything's good. So Alyssa and I will take a little bit of time. We were hoping to get this compactor back this morning, but once I realized I needed to excavate for the water main, we'll have to keep that for another day. So. Uh, we may do a little extra compacting over there and we've been keeping all of our footing beds wet after we compacted them which will keep them from doing any kind of dustiness shouldn't be too bad to keep them wet until monday uh, it's only a couple of days super good news the part we overnighted made it thank you fedex for doing your job this is a two inch poly compression fitting that converts to two inch threaded pipe and I just picked up inch and a quarter poly and all the fittings that we need to run this main house line underneath the footing so we've got a bit of fitting to do I'm gonna use a little bit of heat to manipulate the pipe I hope actually you know what I already know that this poly is nowhere near as brutal as the two inch was so let's get this done and we're gonna compact that over there then we're back to forming
<laughs> Say that one more time. Make sure anything valuable is out of the way. Got it. Five gallons at a time. If I can squeeze by you, uh, I'll get in there. Today's just been going this way all freaking day. It's had stupid after stupid. Lots of stupid today. That valve was not off. So we installed it. I turned it off consciously back in the day. But this thing's nine feet tall. This pipe. That wrench is three feet. Can't fit that wrench because we're gonna trim that pipe. So this whole thing's like a cluster fall wrench at the top of the hill. So to whack that off so I can get the wrench in there and shut the valve off. So I took the fitting off the end of the valve, turns out the valve was open. And it was being extremely difficult to get that fitting off of there. I got two wrenches doing all this other crap. Turns out it was under pressure. Had no idea. Last thing in my mind was that valve was on because I remember turning it off thinking, when I pull that fitting off, I want the valve off, but. I was editing video in the air conditioning while Jesse was running errands because we really don't need two people to do that. And I was getting this like over, powering urge to go outside and help Jesse. I didn't know why, I just knew I had to go help him. And this, I guess that means we're in tune with each other or something. I feel very thankful that this doesn't really jeopardize anything, right? It's just annoying. It is like, annoying. mega annoying. At least it's not the night before the pour. When Jesse was doing errands, he asked if I could somehow wash his orange shirt that he's been wearing for two weeks straight without washing. So I washed it 10 times in the sink. I got a lot of dirt out, but not all of it. I finally gave up. Well, we survived that water main break pretty well. I bet there's probably 200 gallons in this ditch, huh? At least. Yep. It was pretty fun. This is about where I was. Mud up to my eyeballs and half an hour ago. Alyssa's learning how to do a new fitting. Yeah, so you want one clamp around this throat and one okay. clamp on the barbs. Okay. okay. This is our water main and then we're teeing off of it and you're just going to cap a tee. We don't know what we might use this for, but we want to have it there just in case we want to use it. And then this is going to go ahead and go into the house. We need to elbow up so that we've got water line above the slab and we'll deal with uh, finishing that in the house later. Okay, so 
getting the water line into the slab area. A seemingly small task is an all day event. And it's not done yet because there's a bunch of mud down there. It needs to come out. Yep. So Alyssa gets to get it out with the shop vac. It's covering the valve key. And thankfully there's a valve key in there, but if it dries, it'll turn to clay and we'll never get to that valve key. You know what? This is the first one of these we've had so far on this project since I started. No, nope, that's <laughs> not true, Saturday. Last Saturday was one of these days. Broke the backhoe, blew the hydraulics, blah, 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 so. For not coming outside till later in the day or evening. I sure got dirty. Pretty dirty. <laughs> it's gonna be the norm around here for a while. How do you feel about the day? I have no words. <laughs> you know how sometimes in the morning you wake up and you just kind of have that like, I don't know, intuition that today's gonna be a rough day. Some would say you bring you bring it upon yourself if you have that thought, which may or may not be true. I don't know. Hard to say. <laughs> Some days I think it's going to be a bad day and it's fine, so I don't know. Yep. Uh, well, we had a water line malfunction. And I say we, I mean me. Didn't shut the valve off. No need to beat a dead horse. But thank you for cleaning out the valve box. So yeah. That's good. Um, we got all the trench backfilled and compacted. So the total number of forms set today, zero. I didn't get to share. Uh, I did pick up rebar, got that at the lumber yard the uh, yard people loaded me with a full unit, 150 sticks, like I'm guessing probably 3,000 pounds of rebar, the wrong grade. And it took them almost an hour to figure out how to get it off the trailer because it's not exactly the easiest trailer to get a forklift in. So that happened. How do I feel about today? Good. Got all the lumber set out, so we are losing a bit of our help, unfortunately, this weekend. So it's gonna be Alyssa and I setting the forms up in the rebar. I actually feel good about today. I just, very frustrating, just a, a lot on my mind. But that's not really the topic of the video. But I guess, let me just make this comment, that when you're building a house, life doesn't stop, right? And you gotta take it. Yep. You gotta just take, take it. the bull by the horns. To, like, <laughs> you don't, it's, you know, Alyssa and I don't do this for a living. This is, this is like our full-time deal. So we don't go home at five and just like deal with it tomorrow. We have to keep working no matter what life throws at us. I think we did a good job today. I really appreciate your help out here. You saved my bacon. I don't know how. You see, you had intuition too. I did. You said, gosh, I don't know why, but I feel like I should go check on Jesse about the moment that I come out of the trench about waist deep in water. I feel like we have days where we just mob and we do nothing but make a ton of progress. And then we have days where it seems like all we're doing is solving little problems and running errands. There aren't many days where it's like half errands and half work. It's usually one or the other. So today was an errand day and a materials scrubbing day, but yeah. I think we're on schedule to pour on Monday, which is two days from now. So we have Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, Monday afternoon. So I think so we're we still on schedule and I think we're good. It's Friday night, so we might not have a life or a social life or any of that right now, but we do have some not your mom's strawberry rhubarb in the fridge, I think. So I might like guzzle down one of those for dinner. Yeah, Food I think doesn't sound good. off camera we killed a hose today too, so we oh. gotta get that filmed or fixed. Yep. So that happened. What else did we break today? Rest in peace hose. Tried to fix it. Couldn't find the hose repair kit. Here's our rebar. Wow. Hey, that's really pretty. That's pretty metallic -y. Let you guys look at that for a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right, enough already.